So we have a new administration coming in. What's next for technology-related policy based on uh, what's been proposed so far? And Diane, we'll, we'll start with you. Well, I think what's important is to take a step back for a minute and look at how much investment has been siphoned into technology to deal with this extraordinary crisis and the work from home environment. In fact, the only places we saw investment improve dramatically in 2020 was in investment in technologies in both to enhance the work from home virtual experience and to protect ourselves against security issues. And remember going forward, pandemics are now a reality. They're no longer just a plot in a horror movie. And people are looking to technology to be able to keep their operations up and running, even if we were to be hit with another pandemic down the road. And I think that's important to keep in mind as well. Distributing a vaccine in such a magnitude may siphon away resources from consumers ordering online and the shift that we've seen to be able to get deliveries to our front doorstep. And I think that's going to be important to sort of navigate that world as we go forward as well into the spring and start to see these vaccinations show up and then administered by state and local governments. Another important issue is within the current proposals for stimulus is an infrastructure bill of $10 billion. That's really a drop in the bucket for rural broadband, which is something that's extremely important. One of the things that COVID has done has exposed and exacerbated inequality. And the greatest inequality is that it's really accelerated is the digital divide. And we're seeing that play out across the economy and we're gonna need to close that divide going forward. We've got an administration that is chock full of labor economists concerned about those inequalities and how we do that with technology. I think another important priority of the administration, whether or not they'll be able to get funding will depend heavily on the composition of the Senate. No matter who they get in the Senate, it's important to remember, even if Democrats gain a very slim margin of control, the Democrats in the Senate are much more moderate than those in the House of Representatives, much less likely to spend, despite the fact that economists have sort of unified in a low interest rate environment on the importance of investing in our economy into infrastructure particularly technology infrastructure and climate change. The most important thing is to not only heal from the wounds inflicted by COVID, but to dress those wounds and create a stronger foundation from which to rebuild. And that includes a lot of investment in infrastructure, most notably technology to deal with everything from climate change to the digital divide. Now, Diane, thanks for that. And, and Steve, what are your thoughts? You know, there really are bright spots for the industry is the Biden administration is promoting domestic and uh, innovation in a number of areas that would fuel growth for the technology industry. Talked about uh, rural broadband build out, there's a whole build out of 5G, kind of on the carrier side of things. And there's a real push for innovative technologies, you know, artificial intelligence, an example of one uh, where the administration is, is looking to encourage US development there's also a uh, discussion in the investment bills about uh, investing in technology hubs around the country. As we know, the technology industry, while it's kind of associated with Silicon Valley in the West, really is spread throughout, uh, throughout the U.S. So the idea of uh, spur, uh, spurring hubs and creating jobs on a local basis around the country is a big piece as well. There's also a discussion of, you know, the the administration using the significant purchasing power of the federal government spend $400 billion or so on uh, on technology related investments and purchases to drive the agenda as well. You know, uh, Diane mentioned uh, clean energy, battery tech, advanced telecommunications, uh, AI and others. So there are multiple levers that the administration uh, can pull. At, at the same time, there's a ubiquitous role that technology that is playing in society and in industry really has you know, drawn the attention of regulators in the U.S., but really around the world, around a whole host of issues. But, you know, while not new, that scrutiny, I expect, will continue to build in the new administration. Absent trust in the infrastructure, the industry can't possibly grow. And that's really, you know, trust, you know, is it secure? Is it private? You know, is it transparent? Is it reliable? Does it perform? Uh, you know, a whole series of things. But 
societies and business governments ability to to uh, trust technology will really drive growth and some of that is to be sure we've got the right uh, regulations so steve and diane thank you so much for the discussion today on the economic impact um COVID has had on the tech industry so really appreciate your thoughts and insights so thank you <laughs>